R.J. Davis, the ACC Player of the Year, an All-American, uh, one of the more accomplished players this season in all of college basketball, not just Carolina, not just the ACC. He made at least one three in every game this season. Mm -hmm. And most of the games where he had just one or two, it's because he didn't need three or four. It, it's because they were playing very well and, and, and they didn't need him to light it up. Last night, 0 for 9. Last night, he took nine deep balls connected on none of them. He shot four of 20 overall and only scored 16 points. When you're averaging less than a point per shot attempt, you're going to have, as I said at the beginning of the, the, the show, the spotlight on you, the magnifying glass. You're going to have everybody looking towards you, and, and that comes with the, the role, right? If you want to take 20 shots in a Sweet 16 game, you are saying we will either win or lose on the backs of that. Which, you know, takes some some uh, guts, right? It's being the pitcher. It's, it's being any individual sport player, right? You, you can only blame yourself. R.J. Davis, after the game, spoke about what Riley Griffin, one of the members of the, the Alabama Crimson Tide, did that was so effective in defending him. Um, I mean, he's a good player. He's a good defensive player with his length and height, but... At the same time, I mean, I had a lot of open looks that I normally knock down. I'm able um, to make um, just the ball didn't go my way um, in today's game. Usually it does. I'm just confident. And one thing my teammates um, did throughout the whole game was just pick me up and told me, told me to continue to keep shooting. Um, but, you know, sometimes the ball just doesn't bounce your way. But, yeah. I respect that from R.J. Davis. I respect that he always thinks his next shot is going to go in. But, you know, and, and this was my first reaction after the game. If R.J. Davis is normal, like if he's just the, the R.J. Davis that wakes up most days, if he shot, heck, even a little below average for him and he made two of nine threes, right? I'm not asking him to go out there and, and, and shoot 90%. If he, if he shot 20%, they would have won by a couple buckets. They'd be cruising into the elite eight and, and none of this disappointment and sadness would be happening. It would be the difference between adulation and excitement and, and sadness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the, the joy of victory and the agony of yeah. defeat. Uh, so, so that to me is what everyone's going to point at. And it's rightfully so. But we try to take it one step further and look for the why, right? Look for the – if R.J. Davis wasn't knocking down shots, it's really hard for me as a former athlete to just sit there, put my palms to the sky and go, what are you going to do? Some some days the shots don't go in. When in, in actuality, it's, well, good shooters usually don't go 0 for 9, right? Good shooters usually find a way to, to score their buckets. And, and in that second half especially, R.J. was asked to do so much. And we're going to look at some of the, the rotational stuff that confused me throughout the game as the show goes along. But R.J. Davis is, and this is why I think it's, it's tough to project him to the next level as an NBA scorer. He is a shooting guard in a point guard's body, right? Yeah. He is a shooting guard with maybe even a little bit slow-footed point guard's natural ability. But in college, he is a two. He is a shooting guard. He is an off-ball scorer, and that's where he's been his best. For some reason in the second half, UNC decided to use him as a point scorer, like almost not even a point guard, a point scorer, ask him to be the guy creating most of the offense and setting everybody else up. And and it it messed with his rhythm. He wasn't able to get into it. He wasn't able to find his 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 shot. And thus, you could argue that the ACC player of the year shot his team out of a win last night. He was most effective this season off ball when it was either Cadeau or someone else mm -hmm. was initiating the offense and then he was coming something off ball where he can either catch, drive to the lane, mm -hmm. or catch and shoot, or even in transition, catch and shoot on threes. You put the full onus on him to be the primary ball handler when you did not have Cadeau or Tremble in the game. Simple as that. You made him be the primary ball handler, whether it was in transition from defense to offense or even in the half-court sets. Without taking anything off his plate. It's, exactly. it's one thing if... Uh, you know, Trimble and Cadeau, who were having a horrendous game, and they really weren't, but some of the advanced analytics say they, they weren't as effective. Uh, if they're having a horrendous game and you look to R.J. Davis and say, we need you to be the ball handler, we need you to be the setup guy, then you need someone else to take the scoring off of his his plate. And and when he's still finishing with 20 attempts, when he's still finishing with all those threes, you didn't take anything off his plate. You just added more onto it. And, and maybe that's what Hubert Davis wanted to do. Maybe he was saying big-time players, big-time roles, big-time games. We want to live and die with R.J. Davis. Uh, 
which is is a choice. But then you know your season died with R.J. Davis. Mm -hmm. um, looking elsewhere, you could have had superhero performances from somebody else to make up for it. If Harrison Ingram went went full supernova, if Armando Baycott, who finished with a double double, um, if 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 he went full, you know, like 2022 Armando Baycott, then yeah, you could have escaped with a win. But but the fact of the matter is, the hole that was dug by that inefficient shooting was too deep. And and I will say this also: this is not 2020 hindsight. Mm. Yesterday on this show, uh, right after the numbers game, so about 5:40, if you were listening. I said that the the number one thing I wanted to see from from Carolina, it wasn't even from R.J. Davis, was R.J. Davis had to shoot a better uh, percentage than Mark Sears mm -hmm. because they were they're the, the offensive engines, they're perimeter players, they they both are going to get their you know 16, 18, 24 points, whatever it is. Regardless, or as many shots as it takes, I said whichever one shot the highest percentage, that would be the canary in the mind, the indicator that their school was playing the best, their team was playing the best. Sears shot about 50%. RJ Davis shot about 20%. And, and that right there explains the game. So this isn't me, you know, retroactively trying to blame a player. I think there's blame that goes around to everybody. We'll get to the blame that needs to go to the coaching staff. We'll, Harrison Ingram deserves some for, for maybe not being that supernova we were talking about. And, and Cadeau and, and Trimble, they weren't really given a chance to affect the game in, in the second half. So there's blame to go around, but... Yesterday before the game, I'm going to stay consistent after the game. I think the biggest difference was the main score in a high-scoring game for UNC was inefficient, while the main score, uh, who actually wasn't even the leading scorer, but the main score throughout the season for Alabama in a high-scoring game was more efficient. And in a game that close, that can be all the difference. And the thing is, well, when R.J. Davis was being that primary ball guy, mm -hmm. you could tell everyone else on the court became more stagnant. Mm -hmm. Because... Everything initiated with someone else, or even even for R.J. Davis, everything was initiated by someone else. When R.J. Davis, it was like head down, I have one focus and go. And, and that's it, his mo. Like that's yeah, that's, that's his that's been his thing this year. I think it was also proof yesterday that Caleb Love and R.J. Davis on the same <laughs> court on the same night generally do not work together. <laughs> it, was, it was flashbacks of a year ago for a lot of UNC fans. C Caleb Love. Everything I just said about R.J. Davis, you can apply to Caleb Love in, in Arizona. Including the 0 for 9 from behind the, yeah, no, the like, three-point line. Literally everything. I, maybe not 4 of 20 exactly, but uh, every, all of the, the vibes I just said about, about R.J. Davis, you could say about Caleb Love in Arizona. And both will be watching the Elite Eight as Clemson uh, is the ACC representative that moves on.